good people YouTube, I'm the watch it and this is the first video of 2023, which sounds kind of crazy, but I am glad that I'm just starting off with an absolute bang because of this Seiko SPB265. <laughs> Seiko SPB265 Ice Diver Special Edition, which is my first ever experience with the Willard. And now that I've worn it for two weeks, I just have like so many thoughts and it really got me thinking because I've always thought that the Willard was really really cool but it just never really landed enough in my heart to actually buy it but now that I have this particular one you know I'm thinking that this reference is not only the best Willard that Seiko makes right now but it I think it's just one of the best modern Seiko divers but Lord knows that Seiko <laughs> doesn't make a perfect watch, that's for sure. And yeah, this one isn't perfect, but it's uh, not really for the usual reasons that we always come to expect. So in this video, I'm gonna get into why I think that this is the ultimate Willard after getting into some you know, detailed dimensions and seeing how it wears on the wrist. And then I'll go through the dis different aspects of the watch while dipping into the negatives. And uh, oh, and then also I, I gotta say this because I was so excited when I realized what exactly happened. So I got this watch on December 22nd. So the date was 12, 22, 22. And I happened to sign for it at 2.22 PM. I mean, like, how does that even happen? And so like, yeah, the whole entire thing is 12, 22, 22, 2.22. Yeah, so I guess uh, good signs for the Willard and for this watch uh, going forward. But uh, yeah, anyway, uh, let's get into it. <laughs> Okay, so first things first, let's do the dimensions just so we know what we're dealing with here because the numbers do not translate to how it wears in real life, which is kind of uh, the case for all Seikos at this point. And uh, yeah, we've got a case width of 42.3 millimeters with a thickness of 13.8 millimeters with the crystal, that is. And the lug to lug is really compact at uh, 46.3 millimeters, which is actually shorter than the SPB-143 and the SPB-313 Slim Turtle that I have. Uh, and that's a pretty important thing to note. But the 42.3 millimeter width is not at all what it seems because on the wrist, it wears way smaller than that. I mean, to me, it still obviously has wrist presence because of the case, uh, you know, expanding out beyond the bezel and iconic crown guard for that matter. But to me, it more or less wears like a 40 millimeter watch, a kind of big 40 millimeter watch, or even like a 41 millimeter watch. And yeah, that really comes down to the fact that the dial and bezel are set inside the case and don't extend beyond that. And actually compared to the SKX, it looks way smaller. So I would say if you can wear an SKX, then you can absolutely wear this watch. And honestly, if you can, if even if the SKX is too big, this will be that watch that you can wear. I think it will work on a bunch of different wrists. And the bracelet is the same off the shelf bracelet found on the SPB 143, but to me, it works better here, even with just the, you know, two millimeter taper from 20 millimeter lug width down to 18 millimeters at the clasp because of how much wider the base of the Willard case is. So this effectively makes the entire bracelet look a little bit more narrow, which I like. So I'll leave the rest of the bracelet stuff to the bracelet section because uh, yeah, that's pretty much where all my problems are. But uh, oh, and while we're talking about numbers, uh, my particular watch has been running at about five seconds fast a day throughout this, these two weeks over here. So yeah, that is awesome. That is awesome by any standard. So yeah, I am very, very, very happy with that. Okay, so first of all, the colors that they showed for this new set of three ice divers in the press releases is, you know, not only just off but it's just completely inaccurate like at least the color on my watch it cannot be replicated in real life and thank god that they were wrong about all that because i wouldn't have bought the watch if it actually looked like what it looked like in these press photos in real life it is so much better like oh so yeah the dial is just next level stuff from seiko i mean it's exactly what i like seeing from seiko and the dial here is you know one of the best dials that i've seen from seiko and i mean is i would say it's a perfect pairing for the willard and the experience that i want from a willard 
and the dial color changes so much, you know, goes from like a jewel tone deep green in direct sunlight to a jewel tone blue in overcast conditions and just in shade and whatnot. And that change happens indoor as, as well, but then it gets, you know, dark enough with just like, you know, a room lit by lamps or whatever and it pretty much just go like a full black dial. So yeah, the, the color hits really hard when you're outside, which is why, you know, the day that I got it, I immediately went outside, uh, despite it being raining and me pretty much being allergic to rain. But uh, as you can see, the colors change quite a bit and I actually like it best in overcast days because in these conditions, it ends up being sort of like dark, deep, neutral blue that offers you know just enough spice to keep things exciting and not just a black dial but also not too crazy and speaking of spice it's not just a cool color combination that we've got here it's also got a subtle wave texture as well and this gives the dial yet you know another subtle dimension because you can definitely see it uh, when you've got the dial in solid light but it doesn't take away from the color or potentially busy up the experience of the Willard, you know, considering that it's got that bold case. And when I said that it's a perfect pairing for the experience that I want from the Willard, what I mean by that is that I respect the very real history of the 6105, you know, with the exploration, the military service. I mean, Cole Pennington uh, did a really good article on this. And uh, yeah, and this case is just so unique and iconic that my mental image of this watch is set to the pure tool watch that was used in all these situations. So because of that, I didn't want a wildly flamboyant dial color that I would have liked because there are a bunch of other ones that are really, really cool. But I feel like at that point, I it, it would have felt a little bit disconnected and I wouldn't want to potentially wear it that much in just real life. So yeah, what I have here is, like I said before, a Willard with a fantastic dial that just pulls me in every single time I see it, but you know, still subtle enough to respect the history of the watch and make it also very, very versatile. Oh, and then a few days after I got my watch, I got another package and I wasn't expecting that. And what it was, was this whiskey set in this wooden box that was part of the ice divers collection and i had no idea about this so yeah it was just it's a really it's really nice it's uh, got two glasses and whiskey stones i've had no idea what they were before but uh yeah i don't drink but i the, sto the stones are really really cool and i'll probably use it for things i guess <laughs> and uh, yeah but uh, yeah definitely seeing this entire set come with this watch you know all for a hundred dollars more with this dial i mean it it yeah once again more than justifies the price bump over the standard black dial or the other versions okay so now on to the hands uh indices and crystal and it was a little bit bizarre for me just because it was only when i saw this watch in person in front of me coming out of the box that I realized that the handset was black, despite having seen, you know, so many pictures and different reviews that I read of it and, you know, having watched, you know, actually there aren't that many videos of it, but so yeah, I had no clue how this got past me, but I was wondering why this happened. And, you know, after seeing it a little bit more, it pretty much makes sense because this has a dark dial and this has the sort of black chrome finish uh, that the Slim Turtle has and, you know, that finish results in a, you know, handset that is very often not jet black. In fact, I mean, in most lights, it's a uh, sort of light gray, I suppose I could say. And uh, yeah, so that plus the dark dial has some contrast and it made it look like normal hands. And then on top of that, it's got that absolutely awesome half polished, half brush finish that I absolutely love. And the indices are exactly what you would expect from Seiko with, you know, I guess we can call it the split shield marker at the 12 and then the squares and rectangles from there. So, and uh, oh, and also because of the new ISO standards for dive watches, uh, Seiko had to kind of just wedge in a loom plot at the three o'clock position. But honestly, because of that beveled crystal, it kind of disappears, thankfully. Okay, so let's do the bezel first because I absolutely love it. I mean, it's got, you know, standard coin edge grip, but it's a very, very grippy coin edge grip and it's got a black aluminum insert, which is exactly what I would want for a watch like this because it gets a little bit of more like a 
older vibe in. I feel like polished ceramic just wouldn't gel well with this sort of old school design as far as I'm concerned. And as far as the bezel action goes, I think it's just short of the Marine Master 300, which is costs a bit more. But yeah, this is the best feeling bezel that I felt from Seiko, which is awesome. And also it happens to be perfectly aligned, which so that so the fact that it's perfectly aligned with this amazing bezel action and a very accurate movement right out of the box is definitely making me feel better about, you know, having spent the money on this watch. And it just feels even more premium and upgraded because of that insane dial and just the entire package, honestly. But uh, yeah, let's listen to it right now. Oh, perfect. And the case, I mean, it's the 6105 Willard case. So yeah, I mean, it's unlike anything else out there. I mean, you see this case and you know exactly what it is. And I you know, love that it's just so unique. And yeah, the top side of the case is brushed and wide while the sides are polished and they curve in very intensely, which helps make this watch you know, wear so comfortably on the wrist and it helps manage the size a little bit more too. So yeah, basically it's a classically Seiko case in yeah, every way imaginable. And now onto the bracelet and this is where things falter a bit, but in the grand scheme of things, you know, the bracelet is a solid one. I mean, it's relatively comfortable and it looks good for the watch. So uh, yeah, I mean, I can't complain like too much. I mean, I am able to wear it happily, but there are some specific things about it that really bother me. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it could have been so much better. So the first thing that I hate is that stupid divers extension that Seiko does integrated to the clasp. And yeah, it just ruins the feel and the flow on the wrist. And I hate it. And I swap it out every single time that it shows up. Uh, because I hate it. Next up, despite the comfort and the smaller than expected size, uh, this is still a chunky watch and the weight shows it because it comes in at 179 grams, which is only four more grams than the SPV143, which in turn is equal to a 43 millimeter SKX with a 22 millimeter bracelet. Uh, you know, despite it being a watch that's uh, 40 millimeters and has a 20 millimeter lug width. And this is all compared to my Slim Turtle, which is effectively the same size on the wrist as the SPB143, only just a touch smaller than the Willard, but that comes in at 151 grams, which is a normal weight for a watch of its size. But that means that the really awesome solid bracelet that's on the Slim Turtle, the five link bracelet is 77 grams size for my wrist and the Willard and the SPB143 bracelets, because they're the exact same, they come in at 94 grams, which is an extra 17 grams of steel that really didn't need to be there in order to achieve a solid feeling bracelet. And, and by the way, I have no issues with a solid feeling watch. I mean, I have a Marine Master 300, which is just an absolute unit of a watch and the watch head weighs more than the actual watches. But I have to say that to be a solid bracelet, it does not have to be heavy. You know, those concepts aren't inextricably linked over here. I mean, I have a bunch of really solid feeling 40-ish millimeter watches in the 150 to 160 gram range. And for that matter, the Black Bay 58 size for my wrist was 138 grams and the Aura's Diver 65 is like 114 grams. So yeah, I mean, all that being said, you know, is it still a comfortable watch? Yes, it still is. But man, I mean, it could have, I guess I just needed a vent. <laughs> So there you have it, and uh, I'll do a video about the Willard and my Slim Turtle together, uh, just because I have even more thoughts about those two together and how they coexist uh, in the collection and why I bought the Willard in the first place. So yeah, as always, if you wanna see that in the other videos, and if you like this video, hit the thumbs up, the like button, uh, same thing, and uh, the subscribe button with the notification bell button, just so you know 
what's happening in this channel and it helps the channel grow which means even more better videos for all of you guys to uh, watch so uh yeah go ahead and do all that good stuff and uh until the next video good day